Good morning everyone, I'm Bren. Welcome to my cottage garden located here in New South Wales, Australia. And today is a very special one for us gardeners because it is the 1st of September, which here in Australia means the first day of spring. No sign of any apple blossoms on our two trees yet. I think I'm being too much of an eager beaver. Just because it's officially spring, it doesn't mean I can click my fingers and everything is in bloom. I'd say give it about another two weeks and these two apple trees will be absolutely covered in blooms. I've just come under the shade because it's getting pretty hot out there and I really want to share with you two important points when it comes to purchasing apple trees if any of you are considering growing them this season. The first point to make is that unless the tree variety is a self-pollinator you need at least two different varieties to ensure good pollination. The second point to make is that you need to ensure that the apple tree varieties flower at the same time. Now, please don't get overwhelmed with this information because all you need to do is go into the garden center and they will be able to assist you. And even if it's not a horticulturalist, like I often see them taking out books of information that they got from the growers and they can just check it up and ensure that you get the right varieties that suit you and oh my goodness whether you have a large garden or a small backyard there are even now fruit trees which grow really well in pots this includes apples as well I've been going on aphid patrol since yesterday because I found one of these little garden pests. Is that more of them there? What is that? Let me zoom in. Hold on a sec. It is. There's more of them. Look at them sitting there looking so innocent when we all know that they can cause havoc in the early spring garden. Because there's only two of them, all I'm going to do is use my thumb to rub them off and give them a bit of a squish. I mean, in an ideal world, we should really be checking our plants on a daily basis for aphids. And in theory, that's a great way of managing garden pests organically. But if any of you are like myself, a solo gardener, when it comes to spring, there are just so many jobs to do. The plants grow at a tremendous rate and aphids can start to get a bit out of hand. If you do find a big mass of these sap suckers, you can also use your hose to blast them off the plant. Now to answer my own question about aphids, where do they come from? They just seem to appear all of a sudden in early spring and I've just done a quick Google check, very quick, so please don't quote me on this, but the first thing I've learned is that there are over 4,000 species of aphids in the world. And the second thing is the eggs are actually overwintered. So the aphids lay them in autumn, fall time and they survive all winter. And then as soon as the weather starts to warm up and lots of fresh shoots appear, the aphids hatch and begin their invasion. I need to do a, another round of thinning out these purple carrots. So you see here, there's one, two, three, quite close together. All I'm gonna do now is come in here and pull out the one in the center. There's nothing wrong with this one. It's just a little on the small side. So what I'll do now is I'll give it a quick clean, a quick blast of the hose and munch on it leaves and all when I'm wandering around the garden. The reason why I removed this carrot was just to give the other two that were growing on either side a bit more space. Now you can see they both have a bit more room to grow and the three of them aren't competing for nutrients. And what I will do, because this is still quite close, Maybe in about two weeks, I'll pull out another one. I actually might come in and pull out quite a few of these and do like a little mini carrot harvest that we can use as a side dish with a meal. There are a lot of flower buds all over this orange tree. 
And while this fruit tree is about to explode into bloom, I still have quite a lot of mature fruit to pick. I'm a little bit nervous because I know it's probably irrational but I'm worried that we're going to get another massive storm like last October and um, what happened back then if you're new here to my channel was we had this freak storm it was a bit like a tornado and um, I don't know if it was ever officially recognized as that but oh it was crazy and um, what it ended up doing on this orange tree was knocking all of the immature oranges off which meant that I just didn't get a huge or I don't have a huge crop of oranges this year compared to years past. I know there's really not much I can do if we get this kind of mad crazy storm again. It's mother nature isn't it? Unpredictable sometimes. Hopefully she'll be kind to me now. There's a few firsts happening in the garden this week so this patch is anemones and if we take a look over here the first bud has appeared on a very short stem that's okay I'm still learning how to grow these I'm excited for this to open up there's a head forming on this purple sprouting broccoli plant and down here beside the Johnny jump ups and the very pretty dainty snowdrops there's the Johnny jump ups look at this I have to say I think out of everything that's going on this week I'm most excited to see a fresh shoot from wait for it one of my dahlia tubers which I placed in this pot over winter there are lots of flower buds on these Icelandic poppies this one may be open by the time I show you the garden again next week and over here growing beside some fennel is this gorgeous spectacular bloom may I say I think they're pretty spectacular it's from a bearded iris I'm in my little greenhouse now because remember last week I said that today I was going to talk to you a bit about the process of hardening off your seedlings Hardening off is the process of helping seedlings which have been growing in a climate controlled environment. For example, what I'm doing here, starting them off in my little greenhouse or some of you may be starting off your plants under grow lights. Hardening off helps to climatize these plants to the outdoor environment. With hardening off, all you need to do is bring your seedlings outside during the day, then bring them back inside in the evening. They are nestled here under the cover of the greenhouse. If you don't have a greenhouse, you can always just put them up on you know, your porch or somewhere that's protected from any possible frost that you may receive. Leaving all of these seedlings outside helps them to climatize to the weather out there. Any breeze that they experience will help strengthen their stems and they will also get used to the cooler temperatures because you know what it's like in a greenhouse. It's always a lot warmer than it is outside. Hardening off is usually done in early spring. I think a week or two of popping these outside to climatize is sufficient before you plant them into the ground. The most important thing to do before you put your seedlings out is make sure you're confident that you won't get any more frost because the last thing you want to do is kill off all of your little plant babies that you put so much effort into growing. I look at hardening off a bit like, you know, orientation at school or work. It gives you an introduction to the environment that you are going to be permanently located in. If you've got any questions about this process, just ask them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Hey, look at this. I know I've been showing you for a little bit, but these are all the zinnias. Actually, that's not true because I have more down here. I've noticed a few of them haven't germinated yet, but there's still plenty of time. I'm pretty confident that I'll get most of these cells full up with seedlings. 
I've got so many seedlings to put out. I just haven't had the time. Hopefully this weekend, I'm like really hoping I'll be able to do a seedling planting blitz. Well, that's it for this week, everyone. If you stuck around till the end and you enjoyed what you've just seen, please consider giving me a thumbs up because that really supports my channel. And if you are new here, welcome. Please consider subscribing. I post a new video every single Friday. Well, until next Friday, I hope you have a wonderful seven days ahead and happy gardening.